Not bad, not bad. Let's taste it. You have to taste it. You have to taste large chunks of it. With so many fish out here in the aquarium gallery, and clearly we're not even done yet, one of the main concerns I've always had is, how am I going to feed all of these mouths a varied diet that is all nutritionally value and specific to their diet requirements? For example, the Malawi cichlids are going to get, you know, a very generic um, African cichlid pellet. And they go pretty nuts for that stuff. Uh, right now it's like a small pelletized size. I clearly need to upgrade the size, but they're still eating it and I don't like to waste the food. So I'll wait till this is gone and then I'll get them a bigger size and they'll be just uh, doing just fine. The Trophius on the other hand also get an African cichlid pellet, but it's more algae based. So it's very uh, high in uh, greens basically. If I didn't feed them this, they could get Malawi or I'm sorry, they could get a bloat uh, which would kill them. If you give them too high of a protein diet, you know, they just develop bloat and die. So you want to feed them very high, uh, a rich diet in greens. So I give them an algae based diet when I'm feeding them prepared foods like this. The waru get a little bit of flakes, uh, and some, actually they're discus specialized pellets. Waru have a ton in common with discus diet requirements. So I give them a little bit of everything type of deal because there are some, uh, some tetras in here as well that need a much smaller, fit, uh, much smaller food. This was a ton of food that I added to this tank. But you get the idea. I'll also sometimes drop in a leaf of romaine lettuce and they'll go nuts over that. Frank and the Beicher tank, which is not even really done, uh, they get a combination of a few things. Uh, Frank likes his flower horn pellets, but I'll also feed these guys the foods that the arowana and stingray get. The Beicher never comes out during the day to eat anymore. He likes to hide in the wood. I never know where he is in there, but uh, you get the idea. Again, this is just a temporary setup anyways, but Frank eats everything, anytime, anywhere. He doesn't care. Just feed me. The angels are going to get some uh, fish food that's like a crumble. It's got a little bit of everything in there. It's more of a general purpose food. Um, it's a general purpose food is okay, but you're much better off feeding diet specifics. But I mean, there's so many angels in here and they love to eat anything, so I could pretty much give them anything. The discus and cardinals, well, the discus just darted off now that I came over to the tank, but the discus and cardinal tank, they get uh, some discus food, uh, as well as some grow out pellets. None of this is important as to, you know, um, what it looks like, but you get the idea. So some smaller sizes and as soon as it comes over to the Ecotech wave maker that blows it throughout the tank so everybody has a chance to get some food but the uh, the cardinals take on the little tiny pellets and the, the discus they'll go after the uh, the bigger ones once I get away from the tank. <laughs> the rainbows of course already ready to eat these guys will get almost anything that's made for smaller fish so flakes smaller pellets and so forth today I'm just going to give them a tiny little pellet and um, they go nuts for that stuff. There is a freshwater stingray in here as well. And she gets the same food as the big rays, just chopped up a little smaller. We'll, go t we'll, uh, we'll take a look at what we feed the rays now. The rays get a homemade food. I've always fed my rays homemade foods. Uh, this is just larger chunks of it. It's already defrosted as well, so I could toss that in. And everybody enjoys it. The arowana just took a swipe at it just now. But uh, once it sinks down for the rays, they go nuts for it. They love it. And um, it's a much larger size for these rays. The, the smaller ray, I actually showed you guys uh, a few days ago how it eats. And you've seen that, you know, it eats much smaller foods. But it's all the same stuff in it. So it, this has some shrimp and some tilapia and some uh, scallops in there. It's also pre-soaked in some vitamins. So these guys are getting everything they need. Plus, I'll add in some earthworms sometimes. These guys love it. Uh, so earthworms and, you know, other little critters that, you know, are, are seasonal around here. And, you know, I'll add it for them. The arowana seems to be able to eat any size food, even though it's a little too big for her. She'll go ahead and, and, and uh, bite it, chew it up, and eat it anyway. So what you've seen so far is most of the fish in the gallery thus far are getting commercially available foods, meaning you can go out and buy these foods as well. However, you guys also know that I like to feed a varied diet. And does that mean that I have to feed different types of pellets and whatnot? Not really. I like to feed 
treats and treats come in the form for me in frozen foods you guys know what i'm talking about frozen krill brine shrimp bloodworms perhaps and so forth but some of those things can get really expensive especially since you're dropping in half a block into each tank so what i like to do is also make my own homemade foods to an extent for the aquarium gallery to act as a substitute as well as to balance out their diet and to give them a treat. I find homemade foods are very much more wholesome. There's no fillers and a lot of the times it gets finicky eaters eating and even brings fish into breeding conditions and you know just makes them for a more overall healthier fish. But I can't feed frozen foods exclusively because I want to be able to put these tanks on automated feeders when I leave for extended periods of time and I'm talking you know over five days over seven days. I want these guys to still be able to eat while I'm gone and I can't do that with frozen foods right now. So in today's video we're going to make a treat for the discus and this is a food I've never seen discus turn down or refuse. They seem to love it. So today's video is just a video on how I'm making a treat for my discus and kind of why I'm doing it, what I'm adding to it and so forth. But what if I added or what if I made a fish food for all of the fish in the gallery? How would I do it and what would I add? If I was going to make a food or a homemade food for these trophies, I would focus on these main ingredients. Peas, spinach, maybe some kale, some carrots, and of course some proteins like some shrimp, as well as a fish like tilapia or haddock. That will do these guys well, but that's largely because these guys are mainly herbivores and you want to have a vegetable rich diet. As for the Malawi cichlids up top, I'd actually give them the same thing. So that saves me needing to make a different type of food. These guys will accept the same thing as well. But again, I'd probably add some color enhancers to all of these foods. Like uh, there's some yellows and reds in this tank and blues. So I'd focus on adding some astaxanthin. I'd add in some probably some yellow bell peppers, uh, just a little amount. Uh, and, and other color enhancers, of course, like carrots that contain carotene. These are all natural color enhancers and very popular in fish foods as is. Now here's an interesting tank, the walrus tank. What would I make these guys if I made them their own food? Well, interestingly enough, these guys can do well on a herbivoric diet or as a, you know, a, more of a predator protein rich diet. You kind of want to shoot for these guys being omnivores. Well, they'll eat a little bit of everything. So I would add in uh, probably a little bit of beef heart or beef liver. I would add in some shrimp, some tilapia, uh, or other white fleshed fish that isn't too greasy. I'd add in some romaine lettuce. I'd add in some spinach, some kale, probably some peas. You know, a well-rounded out diet. I don't need to add color enhancers to these guys because these guys technically don't need color enhancing foods. Uh, clearly, if you give them a vegetable rich diet, they will turn a little lighter olive in color as opposed to being darker. And that's where you get that really high contrast and coloration when they're older. If I were to give Frank a homemade food, he'd get the same thing as the rays and the arowana. Look at a barrel roll underneath the log. Okay, Frank, you need a boot too and we know it. But yeah, he would get the exact same food that I'm already feeding the rays and the uh, arowana. In fact, he already loves it and eats it as well. The discus food, I wouldn't really change it much from what I'm already giving them as a treat. Uh, I would simply add in some color enhancers. And in fact, when I was breeding discus, I bred them and raised all of the fry up of uh, my own homemade foods, uh, you know, and did that up to a thousand discus. And they absolutely loved it and flourished off it. So that was beef heart tilapia, some shrimp and uh, you know, peas and natural color enhancers like a stack then added into it. And you know, even with some of the Africans, of course, we can add in a bit of spirulina powder. That's always a great uh, additive to those. And then of course the angels up top, I'd give them the same food that I'm giving the discus minus the color enhancers. These guys are all white. I want them to stay that white. You give them too much shrimp or too much, um, you know, anything that has too many color enhancers in it they might lose that coloration. I want them to stay that nice, nice pale white, which is very odd and different for a fish. As for the rainbow fish tank, I would give these guys, you know, almost anything. They'll eat basically anything I offer. I would hold off on the beef heart just simply because they're a smaller fish, much more difficult for them to digest. So I would stick to seafood ingredients. I would go with shrimp, tilapia, probably some scallops. I'd add in some peas. I'd add in some spinach. Uh, and, and that would most likely be it. Maybe a little bit of carrots just to bring out the red coloration in them. And uh, you know, that would be it. 
As for the 2000 gallon tank with the stingrays and Asian arowana, now these guys are already getting a homemade food and clearly they're doing quite well. As you can see the black diamonds, nice dark deep black coloration and white dots. You don't want to feed these guys too many color enhancers or those white dots can potentially start to turn yellow or orange and this is just evident in the color enhancers found in a lot of foods. Uh, so. These guys will probably eat pellets as well, but again, I don't like to feed it too much simply because of the color enhancers. I don't want them to lose that white coloration. Now the Asian arowana up top, this is an ultimate blood red. Clearly it's not even red, it's not even barely pink. You know, you gotta give these guys a couple of years and, and you know, grow them to like 18 inches or so before they start, start showing coloration. But this guy would definitely be uh, fed foods that are heavy in color enhancers, especially in the red spectrum. So anything with lots of astaxanthin in it, if I'm even pronouncing that correctly, would be given to this one here. So like I've said, this isn't a video on how to make fish food for every fish you've ever had. I mean, I've already made three videos on making fish food from making puree to uh, making more chunky stuff. You guys definitely gotta watch those, highly educational. But I've also written about them extensively in my book, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself Handbook for the Do-It-Yourself Aquarius. Many of you guys know about that. Uh, so if you need more information on making food for your fish, just go ahead and Watch those videos, get the book, whatever you want. There's gonna to be tons of information in this video for you guys to use as well. But right now, I just wanna make it, get this over with, because uh, it's actually a little bit of work, specifically because of the types of ingredients I'm using need a little bit of preparation. The ingredients I'm going to be using is beef heart. Now I know many of you guys can't even locate beef heart and every time you go to your supermarket, it's not there. So you can use beef liver as well, it's slightly cheaper and there's technically a lot more protein in the liver. However, the vitamins of what's in beef heart to liver are kind of different, and you'll, you'll pick up those vitamins in some of the other foods we're going to be adding, but this is just a treat, and you don't need it to be a full rounded food. We've already talked about that uh, and, and what you could add to, to round it out a little bit more, but if you need to add some liquid vitamins, go ahead if you wanna do that. The only difference between beef heart and beef liver is beef heart is a much more denser meat. It's not gonna cut up or, or blend easier, but it will hold together when it's in your aquarium. You don't need to add a gelatin or anything like that. I've got videos on using gelatins. Uh, I used those in the past. Waste of time, don't bother doing it. Let it uh, fall into your tank. Your fish will pick it apart. This is gonna hold together just fine. Uh, and if they don't eat it, you take it out. Um, but yeah, so I don't use a gelatin. If you're using a beef liver though, that stuff can be very liquidy. So you wanna rinse it off first and uh, remove a lot of the blood and blend it up. It's going to be very easy to blend because it's a much less dense meat, uh, but it also means you're not gonna be able to add as many of the other ingredients as I'm going to show. This stuff is so cheap that you can uh, test it out, try it out. I suggest making uh, small amounts at, at first and going from there. Beef heart, the amount of beef heart I'm using isn't even a pound. I'm only making two pounds of food total. I don't need a whole lot and this is going to cost me less than $10. The first thing I do with beef heart is when you get it, you might even buy a whole chunk of beef heart or you might just get, um, you know, slivers of it or slaps of it or whatever you're calling it in your country. But one of the things I'm doing, the first thing I do is I remove all the fat that's on the outside uh, and all the arteries and, you know, anything that's not meat, you want to get rid of it. Be generous with your cuts, cut deep, get rid of it. Uh, don't spend all day, you know, making perfect. It's beef heart. This is cheap. You don't actually have to do this with the liver. So that's actually a pro to the liver is you could just, a lot of the times you could just use it, toss it in to your ingredients and, and go from there. But uh, another thing you're going to need is a blender of some sort. Now I bought a blender for 20 bucks, like five years ago, six years ago, and I've used it all that time until it eventually burned out. But you know, for 20 bucks, I couldn't go wrong. So it's an added expense, totally worth it. You wanna make sure it's used exclusively for your fish foods. You don't wanna be uh, using blenders for, uh, that's you being used on raw ingredients um, like this to be uh, used on human foods just because sometimes they don't clean that well and you know you could get sick or something like that. Plus, what we're gonna make is kinda of gross, so it's kind of up to you. With all of these scraps though, I fry them up and feed them to my dog. She loves them and it's really healthy for her. As for the shrimp, we're looking for shrimp that's never been cooked before. So, so far we've got beef heart and we've got shrimp. 
Uh, these are divined or divined or however you want to pronounce it and head removed. You can buy full shrimp if you like. Bottom line is remove their tail at the very least. If you want to include their shell for a little added calcium in the mix, you can go ahead. It doesn't blend up that well and the fish don't get very much from it. So I like to, of course, just remove the tails for sure because technically they're very sharp and you can cut yourself. Now I've done this many, many times before and um, so I can blast through them quite quickly. When I feed my rays, sometimes I just give them shrimp if I don't have anything mixed up. I chop up some shrimp, maybe some fish or something like that. But I'm also in Nova Scotia, so if you guys ever uh, see me using a lot of these fresh ingredients, it's because I live in an area where this stuff is like really commonly available. You can, of course, use substitutes like squid or maybe octopus, whatever you want. Just, you know, stick to some, um, some fresh ingredients, seafood for the most part. You know, try to stay away from fresh water, because fresh water tends to, uh, if you're feeding it raw like this, um, can have some parasites or worms or whatever the case might be. These are all salt water besides the fish. Uh, the fish is uh, aquacultured, so it's a lot safer. But if you're not cooking it, there's the chances of something being transmitted, even if you're, you're, you freeze it first. I'm not cooking it or boiling it or anything like that because it changes the texture of the food and fish tend not to uh, accept that type of a texture most of the time. So after I've got everything kind of prepared, I can move on to cutting it up into smaller pieces. I just cut it up into smaller pieces because it makes it easier to blend up. So I'll do little cubes, chop it up. I mean, if you've got a really expensive and really big blender, you might not have to do this. I don't. I spend, you know, maybe $20 to $30 on a blender or a food processor, and that's it. I bought a new food processor. It was on sale for 20 bucks. It kind of inspired me to make all these treats for the fish. Um, I don't even know if it's going to work. <laughs> We're going to find out. So we've got our beef heart. We've got our shrimp. We've got uh, some haddock. The reason why I'm feeding haddock as opposed to a tilapia is one, it was on sale, two, it's a white fleshed fish and it's not very greasy. You want to stay away from like oily fishes like salmon, for example, which you probably won't buy for fish food anyways because it's quite expensive. Um, but uh, the benefits of going with the whiter fish and that's not so oily is it's still nutritionally valuable, but again, it's just not going to foul your water that much. Like, for example, if again you go with beef liver, that stuff tends to be pretty messy. You want to feed that pretty sparingly. Then, of course, the sh we got the shrimp, tilapia, beef heart. We didn't talk about the peas. Peas are going to round this diet out. You can go ahead and feed whole peas, but uh, I like to buy baby food peas, which is just organic. And that means that it's already mushed up. There's tons of peas in here and it comes in small containers so I can use as little or as much as I want without wasting anything. And they're only like 50 cents. You can sometimes buy one, get one free type of thing. And they're kind of delicious, so if you, don't, if you don't use it all, you could probably eat it yourself. I use peas because peas are the superfood, even for humans. Peas, anything green really. Peas, broccoli, spinach, kale, all really good foods, all great substitutes for fish food as well. Let's start out by blending up the um, beef heart here. Now the thing about beef heart is it's uh, kind of pasty once you blend it up. So what I like to do to water it down a bit, go ahead and add a little bit of these peas. And this is going to make it easier to blend up. It'll process a little bit more. We're, we're going to be adding most of this to it anyway. So it's okay to go ahead and chop in, chuck, in, chuck in here. I'll go ahead and mix up the shrimp. I'm not really gonna cut these in half, but I will break them in half just to make them uh, dice up a little bit easier. Shrimp is always the grossest to kind of puree up. It almost becomes like a, a jelly, but it also has some green peas in it, so it's off color. Usually it'd be just this white jelly. We're getting close though. Now 
Doesn't that look delicious? So at this point, we'll go ahead and add in any remaining peas that I didn't already get in. It's always a good idea to kind of blend them in as you're making this, just to make sure that the mixing process is a lot easier. But uh, as you can see, there's not going to be a whole lot to do here. Um, I probably added the right amount of peas to this. I could go for a little bit more of beef heart in there. The beef heart is just a natural attraction for the, uh, the discus for sure. They absolutely love this stuff. But you want to mix this together as good as you can. It's going to turn into this pink paste. Sometimes a little darker. Now if I were to add in some spirulina powder, that would definitely darken it up. Spirulina is a superfood as well. You can add that into almost any fish food. You'll see it in a lot of fish foods. Basically, if you need some ideas for ingredients, look at whatever you're feeding, the ingredients list on the back. You know, um, a lot of it's going to be extremely vague though, like fish meal and, you know, bits and pieces of this and that and all different other types of confusing things. But if you ask me what's in my food, I can tell you exactly what's in there, even where I got it from, the date it was made, etc. You don't get any more fresh than this. So there you got it. Not bad, not bad. Let's taste it. You have to taste it. And you have to taste large chunks of it. No, you don't. Don't do that. You can do that if you want to do that. Probably going to get sick from the raw fish and raw seafood, maybe. Sort of like uh, sushi. Now we got to put it in bags. So again, I can make whatever types of food I want for every one of these aquariums, but there's one thing in common with all of these fish and they all stay relatively small, meaning I can feed them that pureed mix. If I go ahead and try to feed that pureed mix to Frank, he's just going to tear it apart. It's going to make an absolute mess in the tank. So you don't want to feed this pureed type to big fish. You want to stick to these little or smaller types that will actually eat it. Uh, and consume it. And the benefit to feeding this type of food is you don't need to feed nearly as many, uh, much of this food as you do pellets. So you need to be extremely careful when introducing your fish to it. They're going to love it. I already know that, but you might think you're feeding a, a, a little amount and really it's a massive amount of, uh, of food and you could potentially just pollute your water, cause ammonia spikes and so forth because this is highly organic foods. Even for some of the Africans, when they do get bigger, as well as Frank and the rays and whatnot, you can still feed this type of food. Just chop it up. Don't puree it. You can chop it up into small pieces and feed it like that. They're still going to eat it. You just don't want to puree it simply because they're going to create a massive mess. To package this stuff up, I use these little sandwich bags. You guys have seen me do all this stuff before. I try to be as tidy with it as possible so I don't get uh, food all over the outside of the bag, which ends up being quite a mess. But once I have them all individually bagged up like this, the next step is actually quite simple. I want to use a Ziploc bag or a resealable bag so we can keep getting in and out of it when we need to. Uh, I want to flatten this stuff out. I'm not sealing it yet. I want all the air out first. So I start from the back. I kind of just squish it around. Really simple. Um, I like to have it uh, about a quarter inch, not even, maybe an eighth of an inch thick. So that doesn't mean I'm filling the whole bag, unless I put more in here than clearly I would have to. But once I'm done, all the air has been removed, get a little satchel of food. I freeze this, repeat the process, put this in the freezer as is. I just stack them up on top of each other like this. And once it's frozen solid, I can snap off a piece, drop it in the tank, and the fish thank me forever.
So that, my friends, is how to make a really easy treat for your fish or even some ideas on how to make your own food for your own fish. Again, we've gone over this extensively in the past in previous videos, showing you how to make foods for all different types of fish and all different sizes of fish. So if you're still interested in making your own food for your aquariums and fish, I highly suggest you check those out and give it a shot. I mean, this I've only spent 10 bucks today and I've got, I don't know, three months worth of food here at least for that tank probably six months and these are going to be good, good in the, uh, the freezer for a couple of years at least you know 18 months uh, as long as I keep them frozen you know basically last forever almost the only thing you don't want to do is let them get freezer burnt by opening the bag and food that gets freezer burnt uh, the reason it gets freezer burnt is it's exposed to oxygen that doesn't mean the food is bad it's still good to eat. You can still eat frozen burnt food. It just takes away from the taste a bit. It doesn't taste that great. But contrary to popular belief, it's not gonna hurt you. Anyways guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you're not subscribed to this channel and these are the types of videos that you guys enjoy, make sure you do subscribe so you don't miss out on any of them.